What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So we're going to take a look and a listen to Senator Manchin. He was on Fox News Sunday, and he was talking about Build Back Better, and um, it's not good news. So we're going to play that. But first off, on this channel, we talk about financial news. If that sounds like something interesting to you, please subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell notification. That way you'll get notified anytime we put out a video. And like always, if you see my name and a picture of me in the comment section, make sure you also see a check mark next to my name. That check mark signifies that it's me. If you do not see that check mark, it's not me. It's someone trying to impersonate me. So when it comes to Build Back Better, we know that Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema, they've been the holdouts. And so uh, Senator Manchin spoke with President Biden uh, last week, and they were trying to negotiate a deal. And now we have uh, Senator Manchin going on Fox News Sunday, and let's let's play this clip. And this is this is a little lengthy. I will talk a little a little bit uh, in between, and then at the end, I really want to let you guys know how I feel about this because I think this was this was a setup uh, from the from the start. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look and listen. Here we go. Joining us now, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia. Senator, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good to be with you, Brett. Senator, you're at the center of this uh, negotiation with the president over his social spending and tax bill, a bill, the Build Back Better bill that is not coming up uh, in the Senate before the new year, in part largely because of your reservations. Without you, the leadership doesn't have the votes it needs. So today, right now, what's the state of play? Well, Brett, you know, this is a mammoth piece of legislation, and I had my reservations from the beginning when I heard about it five and a half months ago, and I've been working diligently every day and every minute of every day. I've been working on this, meeting with whether it be the president, President Biden, whether it be Majority Leader Schumer and his staff, whether it would be with Nancy Pelosi, uh, all of my colleagues, I mean, from all different spectrums of, of the political spectrum, if you will, from the right to the left, I've done everything humanly possible. And you know my concerns I had, and I still have these concerns. And where I'm at right now, the inflation that I was concerned about, it's not transitory, it's real. It's harming every West Virginian. It's making it almost difficult for them to continue to go to their jobs, the cost of gasoline, the cost of groceries, the cost of utility bills. All of these things are hitting in every aspect of their life. And, and, you, and you start looking, and then, then you have the uh, debt that we're carrying at $29 trillion. You have also the geopolitical unrest that we have. You have the COVID, the COVID uh, variant, uh, and that is re wreaking havoc again. People are concerned. I've been with my family. I know everyone's concerned. So when you have these things coming at you the way they are right now, uh, I've always said this, Brett, if I can't go home and explain it to the people of West Virginia, I can't vote for it. And I cannot vote to continue with this piece of legislation. I just can't. I've tried everything humanly possible. I can't get there. You're done. This is, this is a no. This is a no on this legislation. I have tried everything I know to do. And uh, the president has worked diligently. He's been wonderful to work with. He knows I've had concerns and, and, and the problems I've had. And, and, you know, the thing that we should all be is directing our attention towards the variant of COVID that we have coming back at us in so many different aspects in different ways it's affected okay so let me just stop right there so he's a no and he's not saying that they're still negotiating he's saying i'm a no and so that means even in 2022 they're going to have to change build back better in order for him to think about coming on board but some of the things that he's mentioning he's mentioning inflation uh he's mentioning the the covid uh outbreak or the the new uh, variant he's talking about uh, inflation. So he's talking about all these things and none of this stuff will, will, will go away overnight. This is going to take time. Uh, and he, he's also talking about the debt. The debt is not going away. We know that. And so all the things that he's putting out there, these are things that he's going to be a no regardless of, of, of what comes up. It, as long as it, if it's going to add to the debt, he's a no. Uh, if it's going to add to inflation, he's a no. So all of these things that he's that he's putting out there, he, he's basically saying he's going to be a no regardless of, of, of what uh, they come up with when it comes to this this whole bill. Uh, so it, it's pretty unfortunate because all these things that he's talking about, they were all there five months ago. OK, so when he was talking about we can negotiate this and they were all these things that he's talking about, they were still there. We, we were still looking at inflation. We were still looking at uh, the, the, the different variants of COVID. We were still looking at all these different things, but now all of a sudden, yeah, I'm a no, 
and he's a strong no now, whereas before he wanted to to negotiate. And I don't know exactly what he was trying to come up with with, with the negotiations because he hasn't been clear as far as is uh, how he wants to move forward. But it, 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 it's just, I, I don't know what to say anymore. I, I really don't. But he is tanking the Democratic Party because they will not recover from this. And when we look at uh, 2022 elections, they will not recover from this, this situation that, they're, that we're looking at right now. In our lives again, uh, we have inflation that basically could harm, really harm a lot of Americans, and especially those who are, are most needy and having a hard time struggling right now. So I think that's where our attention needs to be directed towards immediately. You know, and you're this getting, has been going on for five and a half months. You're getting all the focus, uh, Senator, but are there yeah, other Democratic right. senators right. who are concerned about this bill like you are? Have you talked to them? I, I'm not going to speak for any of myself. I, I respect. They know where I'm. They know the, the difficulties that I've been having with this. I've been very concerned about this. You know, when I first got to the Senate, uh, I, back in 2011, I was having a meeting on armed services. And uh, at that time, Admiral Mike Mullen was the chief of the Joint Chief, was the, uh, head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And I'll never forget, he, in, in, in this hearing, he was asked the question, what's the greatest threat the United States of America faces? And I'm thinking I'm going to hear something in basically with military threats we might have around the world. Without blinking an eye, he said, the, the debt of our nation is the greatest threat. Now, the debt was $14 trillion then, but it's $29 trillion now. Inflation is real. It's not going away anytime soon. We don't know when the end will come. There's a lot of people hurting right now. This COVID, we're fighting on a daily basis, and it's coming at different, different angles at us, if you will. These are serious, serious things. There's a lot of good, but that bill is a mammoth piece of legislation, a mammoth piece. And when it's done even through regular order, it would be a tremendous, huge undertaking. So Democrats obviously are frustrated in your caucus, progressives especially, but they point to what they've been doing since the first part of this. The Senate, the conventional wisdom is the longer it goes, it was going to be trimmed down. But the House passed bill was at $2.2 trillion, down from Bernie Sanders' $6 trillion, the initial pitch, which was lowered to $3.5 trillion, now comes in at just under $2 trillion. So your number at the beginning was 1.7. Where is the disconnect that you are now a no? You can't get to yes? Well, if you're a Democrat, you're first, pushing you? Yeah. Well, Brett, first of all, when this all came about and I went and spoke to the leader, uh, Schumer at that time, and I explained, explained to him where I was and the concerns I had. And at 1.5 trillion is where I thought the most that we could do if we just did it and basically took care of the things that we thought were the highest priorities. Uh, as you recall, Bernie started at $6 trillion, and I think he was sincere where it, what he thinks needs to be done. And the changes he would like to make are social changes. Then they went to $3.5 trillion. That went down to 2.2 from the House side, and even at 1.75. The thing that never changed, Brett, was basically the same amount of things that they're trying to accomplish by just changing, if you will, the, the amount of time that we can depend on them. So if you're going to do something and do it, Pick what our prized priorities are, like most people do in their families or their businesses, and you fund them for 10 years, and you make sure they deliver the services for 10 years. Now, my issue with that is what if it's not working five years or six years down the road? You've already funded it. So why not do it every year you fund it? Because if you do it every year, you can see if it's, if it's effective or not. Uh, why get in these long commitments? Just like It's just like when you get your cell phone. Let's say you get a cell phone and they used to have, and some, some cell phone providers still have this, they have that two-year commitment that you have to have. Uh, but uh, some of the cell phone companies got smart and they said, you know what, let's just do it month to month because what if you get a phone and your service is bad and you're thinking, I want to get out of this plan. Now you can't get out of the plan for two years or you have to pay a penalty. So this is the same situation. Let's do it year by year. That makes more sense to me than to have it for 10 years. And so what they did to bring the cost down and build back better is they had shorter time frames, and then they can reevaluate it at that time. So if it's one year, then they'll reevaluate it next year. If it's two years, then they'll reevaluate it in two years. That makes sense to me because then you can see if it works. You can see if that child tax credit is still working. If it's not working, that's when you can you can start looking at, okay, well, maybe we should make it more targeted or maybe we should change some things. It, it just doesn't make sense to have it 10 years out. And that's 
that's what he's talking about right now. And that's why they were talking about the, the CBO score being uh, much higher because they were averaging it out for 10 years. So when it comes to Senator Manchin, he's going to talk about some other things as well. Uh, but that's the, the key point is he's a no on build back better. And he's not saying that he's still negotiating. He's saying that he is, is, is a no and it doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere uh, from this point. Now, the White House did respond. They responded uh, relatively quickly. Um, on a Sunday, they responded. And I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but basically, uh, this is the press secretary, uh, Jen Psaki, and she was saying that um, there there was a promise made by uh, President uh, Biden and Senator Manchin, and the promise was that they were going to continue to negotiate this and continue to work uh, to move forward with Build Back Better. And um, in good faith, she has here, in good faith, uh, he broke that promise by going on Fox News Sunday and saying what he said. Uh, so I will post a link uh, to this so you guys can check it out. But that that's, that's where we are right now. Now, uh, Senator Bernie Sanders did respond as well. I will put that video out uh, probably tomorrow. I don't want to put too many videos out in one day. I like to just do one video a day. But uh, when it comes down to it, this is what we're looking at when it comes to Senator Manchin. He is a no, and uh, he is not even talking about negotiating anymore. And I, th I mean, he was a no all along. And what really bothers me about this whole situation, uh, let, let's face it, the the way that this was all played out, and 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 the, from the very beginning, the very beginning, as soon as they passed the one point nine trillion dollar stimulus package, and then they moved into okay, we're going to do. The, the the infrastructure bills, the, the 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 first infrastructure bills, the roads, bridges, broadband, and then we're gonna do the second infrastructure bill, the human infrastructure. When they started talking about splitting them up, that was a huge sign. That was a huge problem. Uh, they should have put them both together. And I know hindsight is 2020, but they should have put them both together. And I was talking about this even back then, that they should uh, pass them together uh, or pass them as one bill, not even pass them together, pass them as one bill not split them. Uh, but when they split them, then there was a talk of, okay, we're gonna have the first infrastructure bill and the second infrastructure bill ready to go at the same time and then pass them at the same time and have the president sign off at the same time. That was the second strategy. And they, you know, you had progressives that tried to hold, to try to hold up the first infrastructure bill for as long as they could. And then it got to a point where they just said, okay, in good faith, we're going to go ahead and pass that first infrastructure bill, and then we'll work on that second infrastructure bill. And so that's what they did. They passed the first infrastructure bill, and guess what? Now we're into December. We have no second infrastructure bill. We will not have a second infrastructure bill anytime soon uh, because Senator Manchin, he pretty much pulled a fast one. He, he was the one that spearheaded the first infrastructure bill, okay? a spending bill. He was the first one that, that pushed for that. That's adding to the debt that he's talking about, not adding to that, that's adding to the debt. And so now he's a no on the second infrastructure bill, which we knew all along, he had his reservations about the second infrastructure bill, but he couldn't say that he was a no back then, because if he said he was a no back then, then he knew that first infrastructure bill wouldn't go through. So it, it's it's just sad how how things go when it comes to, to politicians i mean they're just they, they'll say one thing and then they they will they'll backpedal and 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 not do what they're saying that they want to do and you see it, it it does take a lot of politicians to come together we're talking about 50 democratic senators to come together to vote for this bill uh, that's what you need at this point uh, because you're not getting any support when it comes to uh, the Republicans. Now the Republicans have been able to sit on the sidelines and not, not say anything, not do anything. And now they'll come out and say, look, the Democrats failed. And that's what they're going to run on in 2022. And they have a very, very good possibility of taking over the house and the Senate. And if they do that, well, I think, and this is my speculation. Okay. I think if Republicans take over the Senate, especially the Senate, you're gonna see Senator Manchin become an independent because Senator Manchin will be running for reelection in 2024. And so you're, I, I, I'm pretty sure if Republicans take over, Senator Manchin will become an independent. That way he can go back to uh, West Virginia and say, you know what, I'm no longer a Democrat because in West Virginia, President Trump, he won overwhelmingly in West Virginia. 
And so he knows, uh, Senator Manchin knows that there's really not too much support uh, for Democrats. And he's been able to luckily uh, skate his way through uh, the, the elections when it comes to West Virginia. But I think at this point, he's probably going to become an independent. He's already talked about it. He's already talked about it. He's going to wants to become an independent and caucus with the Democrats. I think if Republicans win the Senate in 2022, he will become an independent and then he will be that kind of um, swing vote if, if he has that opportunity. We don't know what the numbers will look like yet when it comes to the breakdown of how many Democrats and Republicans in the Senate will, will be there. But uh, I, th- I think that's what we're going to be looking at, looking at Senator Manchin as an independent. And this is just this is survival mode when it comes to him running in 2024, because he will not be able to win as a Democrat, or I think he feels like he won't be able to win as a Democrat, so he's gonna have to be an independent. And then of course, he's gonna go back to this situation, the Build Back Better and all the different uh, bills that he opposed. Uh, so that's what we're looking at right now. Uh, we're, we don't have anything on the table. Uh, the next thing they're talking about voter rights, uh, that's gonna be another bill that they're gonna have to look at. Uh, the filibuster, something that they're gonna be talking about. I think the only other strategy at this point, if you can't get Build Back Better as a big bill, then you're going to have to break it down and uh, maybe they can focus more on this whole filibuster uh, talk. And all along, I, it, when it comes to the filibuster, make it the way it used to be where they have to stand on the Senate floor and they have to talk. Now they don't have to do that anymore. So if you have a bill and you want to present that bill, then it, it, basically now you need the 60 votes in order to avoid a filibuster. But if you don't get 60 votes, let's say you get 50 votes, you can still move forward because you'll have... Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris come in and break the tie. You can still move forward with the bill, but it can be filibustered. So now you can allow these are these Republicans that don't want to vote on a bill, allow them to come on the Senate floor and talk for eight hours or 10 hours. They're not going to be able to do it. OK, let's just face it. You have to stand there. You can't leave and you have to talk. And so if that's the case, you're going to have some of these senators saying, you know what, let's just move it forward to a vote. Uh, and not try to obstruct because they know that they won't be able to do that or they'll only be able to do it for a certain amount of time. And then when it comes down to it, once they're done with their filibuster, then you can come in and vote. That's the way it used to be and that's where they need to go back to. But now they don't have to do any of that. All they have to do is say, we didn't get the 60 votes, we're threatening a filibuster and then they just don't move forward with the bill. So we'll have to see where where all this goes, but um, I I think they, they, they do need to focus. If they can get the filibuster or at least go back to the old rules of the filibuster, then maybe we can see a situation where they start passing these these uh, bills a piecemeal. So you just have one tackle one thing: the child tax credit, cha- tackle the uh, expansion to Medicare, uh, tackle just one thing at a time. So uh, that's where we are. I want to know what you guys think about Senator Manchin and and his just flat out no when it comes to Build Back Better. Let me know down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.